Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tom Merkel, and I'm going to be doing a session on the UiPath Robot.js um, SDK. Um, I'm a senior sales engineer here at UiPath, and I'm on the uh, Robot for Every Person core team. So first thing I want to go over is just a bit about me. I uh, joined UiPath in 2018 uh, in the pre-sales department, where I specialized in demos and proofs of concept, um, really across a wide range of different customers and technologies. And prior to that, I worked as a software engineer, um, specifically building data collection systems. Uh, in, 2020, in 2020, so last year, I joined the Robot Furry Person core team, which is what I'm currently on. Um, and I'm working on developing really uh, a dozen of out-of-the-box attended automations to really help support our customers um, when they go to deploy automation. Uh, you can, if you're interested, you can check out this link to um, our Robot Furry Person bundle on the marketplace. Um, and the reason I mention this is because a lot of what we're going to show in this demo um, is kind of uniquely tied to attended automation and the ways that users interact with um, our robots. So before we get started, I just want to quickly mention that um, while you know we're going to be showing a lot of cool stuff in this presentation, um, some of it may be forward-looking, um, and some of the statements might not uh, exist in the future depending on how our product rolls out. So just a, a quick kind of um, safe harbor mention. So why are we why are we talking about this? Really, when we think about it, um, you know, a couple statistics here: eighty percent of the people in companies who have gone towards adopting RPA um, are really intending to provide their uh, employees with access to the tools um, to not only build automation but use automation. Um, and then you kind of take that a step further, and seventy one percent of workers in these companies are actually interested in automation um, to support their, support their daily work. So the reason we point this out is specifically because as we kind of move towards uh, a fully automated enterprise, uh, we're really interested in different ways that people can leverage the automations that they have at their disposal, right? Um, so on this next slide, we're gonna talk through uh, a few different ways that you might interact with attended automation. So uh, going from left to right, we've got you know the hands-off uh, model where essentially a user might kick off an automation um, and the robot is going to just take control of everything and then run with the automation. Um, kind of moving along, we've got side by side where I might be working on my desktop while the robot is doing something, um, you know, similarly on the side. So whether we're using picture in picture or um, you know simulated activities, I'll, I can still maintain control of my keyboard while the robot is doing something else. This uh, this middle section is what we're going to focus on today, uh, specifically around the interactive ways that we can. Uh, work with attended automation. So in the context of an application that I'm already using, uh, my robot's going to essentially be able to take the context of that and, and do stuff with it, right? And I'll get into what that means here in a bit. But um, kind of moving along forward, we've got event-driven, so the robot might listen and uh, act on something. And then interconnected, where we have multiple robots working in tandem. But again, we're going to focus on the kind of middle uh, bucket here with interactive automation. <clears throat> So that brings me to uh, the actual piece of technology we're going to talk about today, and that's our robot.js, um, what, what we're calling robot.js, but it's essentially a JavaScript SDK that allows us to embed um, automation logic into anything that can run JavaScript. So um, an example of this would be, as you can see on the right-hand side of my screen, we've got Excel. Um, an Excel add-in can run JavaScript code, so we can essentially embed um, logic to connect to our robot assistant um, in, in Excel itself, right? And so uh, you can extend this as well to web applications. And what we're, what we're going to show today is us actually um, injecting this SDK into a web app and then uh, running an automation directly from that web app. Uh, so the reason we want to be able to do this is because you can keep users um, in the systems that they're comfortable with using. So it really lowers the barrier to entry for running automation. Um, and again, you can, when I say contextually embed, what I mean is the robot will now kind of understand any aspects of the application that you're working with um, and can use that as input to an automation. Um, <clears throat> again, it's, it can be really leveraged in any application that can run JavaScript. So, many, so some examples are office add-ins, local applications, or even web apps. Um, and again, I'll show you today how we can do one where um, we don't even really control the web app. We're actually injecting JavaScript on the fly. Um, and it's a pretty interesting use case. Uh, you can also um, you know, 
pull things like the list of processes, status updates, um, and either render them in the web app or do something um, accordingly. So uh, a brief kind of comment on the architecture and how this is set up. So robot.js uh, comes directly with any robot um, in 20.2 or higher, and anything previous can be installed separately. Um, the, the way this works is that you have your, your web page or desktop app, essentially whatever application is running the JavaScript here. So this could also be you know, Excel or Word or anything that's really able to run JavaScript. The SDK is embedded in that application, and I'll show you how we're going to do that in the example today. And then um, it basically interfaces with the robot through this work. You know, in this diagram, it's the embedding add-in, but it's really the JavaScript add-in that comes out of the box with your robot. And then the robot is like normal, the thing that's going to be communicating with the orchestrator to pull processes, trigger things, um, and, and, and really do anything that a normal robot would do. And so essentially anything your robot can do, you can do via the SDK in the web app. And I'll kind of show how this, um, how this works and we'll, we'll dive into the code here in a bit for this uh, demo that I'm gonna show. <clears throat> Brief, uh, briefly on some of the benefits, um, if, if I didn't hit on these already. So quicker access to automation. So getting, um, when, when you roll things out via a, you know, a robot SDK, um, it really will lower the time to your users being able to, to leverage automation, right? They don't need to necessarily learn an entirely new um, assistant interface. They can basically just press a button within whatever they're used to. Um, and it's, it's a quite you know, quicker way to invoke the attended automations. Um, it's, it's more intuitive. If you have users who are used to uh, leveraging one of your internal apps or, or using something day to day, um, they don't need to worry about you know, launching the correct in the correct automation through the assistant and finding it, you can embed um, exactly what they need uh, in the um, application that they're working in themselves. <clears throat> and then finally, uh, deployment flexibility. So you can really customize the SDK, or at least how you, how you work with the SDK, um, really customize it to the application. So it's, it's really flexible in, in how the users interact with it, how they trigger it, um, and it can be customized to each application. So it's very flexible. And, and how these are deployed and um, really kind of adds to the whole uh, user experience of attended. So with that, I'm going to get into the demo. Great, so for this demo, um, I've got two processes in my assistant, the RPA market watch list scrape and RPA stock market inject JS. So um, one of these is, basically a background process that we're going to inject into a web page that we actually don't have access to. So what I'm going to do is click on this RPA stock market inject JS. This is going to start a background process that's basically listening for me to start interacting with this website. So this is the you know RPA market kind of stock ticker website. And as soon as I click this watch list button, you'll see a UiPath logo that mounted in the top left of the screen. So what my automation here did was actually injected the robot.js SDK directly into the website. So now if I click on this UiPath button up on the top left, as soon as I click on it, we'll have a, another automation triggered, right? So this RPA market watch list scrape automation got triggered directly from the website. What this scrape is gonna do is it's basically gonna pull the data from the screen and then send me an email and notify me of its success. And then as soon as I, get that email, which will happen here in a bit. It sometimes takes a little bit while to, uh, to here. refresh a couple of times. <clears throat> oh, there we go. Cool. So I got a my RPA market watch list, and this is the, uh, the data. So we've got the, the first ticker or the first table, and then the second table just dumped into an Excel sheet. So uh, very straightforward, but I'm gonna actually dive into some of the code and how this is built and we'll, we'll walk through the logic behind this. So on the left-hand side here, we've got the um, RPA stock market inject uh, file. And so this is the code that's actually being injected into the, um, the website. And so the only thing I really wanted to point out here was this inject JavaScript um, activity that's highlighted here. And you can see the file name is RPA stock market JS. So what's happening is, like I said, as soon as my bot notices that I've clicked on the watch list button, it's gonna run the logic to inject this bit of JavaScript code. So 
the JavaScript code that we're injecting, I've pulled up on the right here. And this is the file. And I'll kind of walk through line by line what is going on here. So essentially, uh, the first thing we're doing is we're going to uh, inject the actual robot.js SDK. So we're going to create a script element and basically just make the uh, robot.js uh, source code exposable to that um, and then add it to the, the actual document. The second one we're going to do is we're going to add the um, code that we want to run with the, with the robot.js SDK. And I'll go over that in a bit. We're going to also that, add that to the, to the document. And then um, we're going to basically build a, an entry function or just something that when we click on the button, um, it's going to run the, uh, the code that we, we've defined in the other file here. And I've, I showed you that there's an on-click handler that we've, we've attached. So basically, this first bit of code is what we're injecting to the button. And then this is what we're going to do when the button is actually clicked. And so this is kind of the, the main um, logic of the robot.js SDK. Um, so you can see it's the, it's the function that we, we told it to, to run when we click the button. So um, this is where you can kind of get into what the robot uh, is able to do. So the first thing I um, wanted to point out here was the process name. Um, RPA market watch list scrape. So that's just me basically defining a string that's going to correspond to the uh, process I want to run. Um, I can build some arguments if, if it calls for it, but I don't need to. And then I'm going to initialize the robot with UI path robot init. I can get the processes from the actual robot itself. And then I can do a little bit of error handling if the robot's not connected. And then basically what I'm going to do here is find the process. Um, you know, if you could, if you understand JavaScript, this is very straightforward. Basically, the results that I got from the <clears throat> get processes call, I'm going to find the um, one that includes the process name um, that we defined above. So basically, now I have reference to the process that I want to run. Um, I can then, yeah, this process name here. I can then um, do some error handling, and basically, if it's available or not available, I can error out, and then I can just call process .start pass the arguments that, again, I didn't make any arguments, but I could if I, if I had some input args. Um, and then based, based on the result of this process running, um, I can do something, right? Like you know, in this case, I just kind of announced a status to the website. Um, but basically, this process.start is you triggering the process that you've uh, attached to, and it's just calling, calling start on that process. And so you can do things uh, based on that. And in this case, all I did was um, just notify the user that the process ran successfully. But you could imagine, um, you know, passing information back from from the automation um, to the to the website or vice versa. So let's just run this one more time. Uh, now that we've gone through <clears throat> the inject JavaScript piece and the uh, JavaScript files, so we hop back into the website. And the cool thing about this is that the robot will just listen for this website. I don't need to restart it. As soon as I click the watch list, again, it attaches the UI path logo. So I'm going to minimize this. Once I click the UI path logo, we're running that entry function that we uh, told to grab onto the process and run it. And once it's run, um, we should hop back into, um, OK, it's completed. And now we should get another file. Cool. So that was the uh, robot.js demo. Um, we kind of injected the JavaScript SDK into a website and then used that website to actually trigger the automation. Um, so you can imagine kind of doing all sorts of things with the context of the website. Maybe I pass it some information on input or the, the URL. Maybe I could respond with some information and embed it back into the website. Um, so really, this back and forth can be facilitated uh, really in any way you um, like. So. Um, kind of finally, you know, a couple calls to action for anyone interested. Um, we've got you know full documentation on how to use the robot uh, JavaScript SDK. Um, it's on our official documentation page, so it's very easily very easy to find. Um, and then any feedback you have about uh, robot JS, we'd love to hear from you on the forum. And um, you know, please share any interesting use cases or any uh, interesting ideas you have around how to use this automation. So um, with that, I'm gonna. Um, and end my session on uh, robot.js. Um, so have a great day.